Rachel Profit here with another getting started video. I am a white female with reddish brown hair that's pulled back in a bun today. I am wearing a black shirt with a blue cover up. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm in my office as usual with my epic sticker wall behind. Today, I want to focus in on operating units. So let's go ahead and switch over to the software and take a look. So I'm here in finance and operations and I want to go ahead and navigate into the operating units page. So I'll click on modules on the left navigation pane, select organization administration, and then underneath organizations, I'll click operating units. This will open up a new page where you can see the full list of all operating units that have been created. Operating units are not legal entity specific, so no matter which legal entity you're connected to, you'll always be able to see the full list of operating units. They're shared across all the legal entities. There are a variety of different types of operating units, and you can see what those types are when you click on the new button. Out of the box, you're provided with department, cost center, value stream, business unit, and retail channel. Each one of these operating units has additional functionality that can be used throughout the system. Any of these operating units can also be used as a financial dimension when you're setting up your chart of accounts and your ledger in the general ledger. Retail channels are a special type of operating unit that have additional functionality for e-commerce type businesses. I'm not going to be diving into the details of that today, but we'll take a look at how to set up and create an operating unit. If you want to change the name of one of the operating units or you need additional operating unit types, a developer can perform an X++ extension to rename existing operating unit types or to add new operating unit types. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and create a new department. Here, I'll need to type in a name for my department. So I'm going to type in Unbox Sample. A department number is generated for me automatically. This is based on a number sequence that was set up when we ran the wizard. This number sequence can be overridden to change the formatting or the numbering. And because I've already got a fair number of operating units created, you can see the next number that was generated was 230. In the operating unit type field, this is where I can select what type of operating unit this is. You're allowed to change this up until the point you save the record. Once you save the record, you won't be able to change the operating unit type anymore. The search name is automatically populated with the same value that you type into the name field, but you do have the ability to update that. Um, this can be useful, for example, if you have a nickname or an abbreviation that you want to use for the search name to make it easier to search for. The memo field is simply just a place where you can type notes about your operating unit. In one of our future videos, we'll talk a little bit more about the hierarchy options for operating units. Because I've just created this, you can see that the operating unit is not in a hierarchy and you're not able to actually mark this checkbox. It's checked automatically when you add this operating unit to a hierarchy. In the DUNS number field, you can enter in your DUNS number and you can optionally link in a worker using the manager dropdown box. We haven't created workers yet in our Getting Started series, so I'm going to skip this step for now. Next, you can optionally add an address for your operating unit. This is not mandatory like it is for a legal entity, but you do have the ability to add an address by clicking on Add, entering in the details about your operating unit, and then clicking OK at the bottom of the dialog. I'm going to skip this since my department doesn't have a specific operating unit. Next, I'll scroll down to the contact information tab and click add to add contact information. For my example, I'm going to create a main phone number. In the type field, you'll select the type of contact information. Contact information can be things like phones, email addresses, websites, and so on. Then in the contact number slash address field is where I will type in the details. You can optionally enter in an extension and mark it as the primary contact information. You're allowed to mark the primary checkbox for one of each type. So for example, if I add three phone numbers, only one phone number can be marked as the primary. Up at the top of the form in the related forms action tab, you can click on this and see additional forms. 
Because I created a department in this example, there are additional functionality in the human resources module related to departments. Here you can see I can navigate over to compensation, positions, and see the number of workers that are tied to a particular department. Next, I'm going to click on the operating unit tab in the action pane, and we're going to create a registration ID. I'll do this by clicking on the registration IDs button, and then clicking on the new icon to create a new registration ID. You can see a location ID is generated for me automatically. This again is based on a number sequence that we created. Then I can type in the details. You can optionally add in an address for a particular registration ID, add contact information by using the add button, and the registration ID tab is where you'll need to type in the details. But before you can click add on the registration ID, you'll need to save the record. Once you save the record, the add button on the registration ID will be enabled. So you'll click the add button here, and then you'll need to select a registration type. If you have not created registration types, you'll need to go and create registration types. And then in the registration number field, this is where you'll type the number. So for example, a registration type might be an EIN or social security number, depending on the type of uh, government agency that this particular organization is being registered with. Since this is a department and this department's not registered with any government agency, I'm going to simply remove this. You do have the option on the general tab to also update additional information such as the time zone, latitude and longitude, and depending on the country or region that your registration ID is in, you may get additional fields that are specific to that country or region. When you're finished, you can simply close down the form. So now you know how to create a new operating unit. In one of our next videos, we're going to dive into some more details about how to use your operating units, put them in hierarchies, we'll talk about organization hierarchy types, and more. Be sure to put your questions and comments below, and as always, like, subscribe, and click that bell icon to get your notifications, and we'll see you next time on Dynamics 365 Unboxed.